The Trembling World, Chapter 36 Identity card The sudden turn of events left the remaining four scumbags bewildered and shocked the moment they had realized what transpired. They were frantically scrambling for their weapon and attempting to surround Liu Gan, to which Liu Gan reacted by raising the approximately 80 kilograms yellow checkered shirt's body over his head and vigorously tossing him towards two of the scumbags. After that, he rushed in front of the other two, one of the two that Liu Gan was rushing towards raised the machete that he was carrying and hacked down forcefully at Liu Gan as soon as he was within reach, with swift agility. Liu Gan shifted his body sideways and beautifully dodged the machete, with one of his hands. Clenched into a fist, Liu Gan punched at the machete-wielding scumbag's chest, easily blasting a bloody hole in his chest. The machete-wielding scum weakly crumbled to the ground. Never to move ever again, Tian. I shoot you not. It says a hole. The other pile of human-shaped dirt was filled with terror. Appalled as he peered at his former ally whose face was touching the floor and had long since stopped moving, thinking to himself, FCK. Is he even human? A punch of his blew up a hole in his comrade's chest. Nugan removed a machete from the dead scumbag's hand and unhesitatingly hacked at the neck of the scumbag who was still in shock. With no resistance at all, the scumbag, now on the floor, was killed instantly. The other two who were knocked down by the flying yellow checkered shirt man Liu Gen had tossed earlier were slowly getting up as they were crushed by the heavy yellow checkered shirt man. They were still in a daze as they stood up. The force of impact was as if a minicar ran into them, hence they met their makers shortly after due to the inability to put up any resistance against Liu Gen who rushed towards them and hacked them to death. Pan Hua, who was following behind, was thoroughly appalled at the scene and had stopped moving for a moment, after which he hurriedly rushed towards Lulu, cutting loose the ropes that bound her wrists and legs, after which, with an embarrassed expression, spoke a few words to her, Lulu continued to sit on the floor and Sluggishly stared at Liu Gan. The slaughtering of those waste of space nobody's happened to fast that Lulu was still trying to make out what really happened. Boss, I am in the wrong. I should not have suspected you. I almost made the matter worse. I already knew that you were a good guy. You would definitely not harm Lulu. Pan Hua walked towards Liu Gan and apologized sincerely. Liu Gan coldly looked at Pan Hua and did not reply him. He turned around, picked up his backpack and went forward to search the bodies of the dead good for nothings. Both Pan Hua and Lulu were too weak, especially Lulu. She was so timid that during her job as a sentry for the team, she could not even notify Liu Gan that something had happened in time. This type of stupidity was not tolerable at all. After what happened this morning, Liu Gan decided not to let them remain by his side to continue in this post-apocalyptic world. A team with strong-willed and trustworthy members was the key to survival, especially after a long and arduous day if there weren't any trustworthy teammate, sleeping was also considered very dangerous, no matter if it were zombies. Other players or lucky survivors of the trembling world, there were many latent dangers, which forced people to remain guarded even if there weren't any suitable team member. Liu Gan couldn't haphazardly let any more random people form a team with him as it would only lead to a faster deed. H for himself, Lulu who finally gathered her. Wits went over to the shivering naked lady and released her from the ropes. After that she supported her and lead her back into the hardware shop. Lulu then came out and walked towards the minimart as she recalled that the lady's clothes were there. Pan Hua gazed at Liu Gen who was raiding the corpses, hesitated for a moment, before picking up a machete and hurried to the side of Lulu who was trudging over to the mini-mart. The loots gathered from the five scumbags were pretty good, other than the two grenades that Yellow Checkered Shirt had, Liu Gen managed to find a few packs of bread and bottles of drinks. There were even disinfectants and plasters. Looks like they managed to plunder a drugstore. Yugan also managed to find three cards. On the yellow checkered shirt guy, 
The cards looked seemingly like some kind of identity cards and on them was the Senshin Corporation logo. Nugan cannot but furrowed his brow as he pondered the reason as to why the scumbags have these. Identity Cards, the photo on the identity card did not match any of the men. Liu Gan then walked into the pawn shop and compared the photos with the naked lady. Seeing that one of the photos was a perfect match, Liu Gan realized that the identity card would most probably belong to the naked lady. Liu Gan walked over to the corpses and retrieved a shirt from one of them. He then walked to the naked lady and covered her with the shirt. Are you one of the workers from Senshin Corporation? Liu Gan asked the lady. The lady did not reply Liu Gan and looked at him with immense fear while her whole body trembled uncontrollably. Is your name Zhang Yu? Liu Gan used the identity card to compare and asked. The lady remained silent. She did not acknowledge. With even a nod or a shake of her head. What is the cause of this apocalyptic world? Are the zombies a product of your experiments? Liu Gan inquired. Zhang Yu shook her head with visible strain. The fear on her face had gotten even more intense, do. You know about the video game The Trembling World, Liu Gan asked Zhang Yu again. When Zhang Yu heard the words The Trembling Word, she had a distracted gaze, but continued to remain silent. She was already at her limit, traumatized and numbed at. Everything said or done to her. I did not and will not cause you any harm. I was the one who rescued you from that group of scum. I would like to ask whether you know about this game, if you do. Why are we players trapped in the game? Liu Gan asked. Zhang Yu in a gentler and warmer tone. The source of this content is in Zero V Alvin. Net Zhang Yu shook her head and her facial expression displayed some confusion. As though she did not understand what Liu Gan was talking about, looking at her, Liu. Gan was reminded of the time when he was trapped on the billboard where met the female crew member from the helicopter. At that point in time, he had a lot of questions he wanted to ask her. However, their conversation was totally incoherent and he could not understand what she was saying. Now he managed to meet another Senshin Corporation worker but wasn't able to find out anything from her. What are the uses of these identity cards? Liu Gan placed the three cards in front of Zhang Yu. Previously, when he was playing games, there would always be items that could be obtained and would trigger conversations or give information about some specific quest. He was hoping that by doing that he would be able to obtain some facts from her. Zhang Yu did not shake her head this time, however, she continued to keep her mouth shut and refused to speak. She continued to look at Liu Gan fearfully and her trembling got worse. Liu Gan furrowed his eyebrows and figured that this lady had been traumatized to her limits by the group of scumbags. She was not replying no matter what he asked her, no matter how he continued asking her. It would probably make her even more fearful and make the matter worse. Pan Hua and Lulu walked into the hardware shop. Lulu managed to find the clothes of Jiang Yu near the entrance of the mini-mart. She squatted beside Jiang Yu trying to help her wear her shirt back. Liu Gan stood up and went outside the hardware shop, observing their surroundings. Boss, I found a weird-looking bottle outside the mini-mart. There is a Senshin Corporation logo on it. Pan Hua walked towards Liu Gan and handed it over to him. 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 The Trembling World. Chapter 37. Frantically rushing, Liu Gan extended his hand and took the bottle from Pan Hua. The small bottle was made of metal. After looking at the Senshin Corporation logo, he gave the bottle a shake to see if there was anything inside. He could feel waves pushing against the inner walls of the bottle, denoting that there was probably some kind of liquid held within. Liu Gan flipped the bottle and saw that there was a small word incubator written on the base of the bottle. However, a description of what the bottle was incubating wasn't present. Incubator. Maybe it is some disease or virus. Boss, you must take caution when you open the bottle. Pan Hua hurriedly cautioned Liu Gan after he saw the word. The purpose of handing over this bottle, which he found, was to fawn over Liu Gan. It would be big trouble if the bottle ended up causing him harm. Liu Gan figured that the lady named Zhang Yu would know what is contained in the bottle. Hence he turned. Ran and made his way back into the hardware shop. 
However, at that moment, a shriek coming from the hardware shop. Liu Gen and Pan Hua immediately rushed into the shop. There was a freshly cut wound along. Jiang Yu's throat, fresh blood was spurting. Out of the wound, dyeing the ground crimson red, she looked like she was still conscious and there was a piece of metal blade found on the ground beside her where her hand laid. This Zhang Yu must have searched for this metal blade from the hardware shop when Liu Gan and Gang weren't paying attention to her. What does this bottle contain? What is it for? Liu Gan rushed towards Zhang Yu and applied pressure to the wound and pressed on her carotid. Artery hoping that the blood will stop, Zhang Yu glanced at the bottle, opened her mouth and muttered something that was not audible. A short while after, her eyes became lifeless and devoid of any response. Feldy, WTH. The new characters died so fast. Might as well don't give them any names. Zhang Yu and her boyfriend Li Hui had left the safety of their apartment in search of food at the break of dawn. They discovered that zombies were less reactive during the morning sunrise. But they weren't killed by zombies. They were ambushed by five scumbags who killed her boyfriend Li Hui and now she committed suicide. Unable to handle the humiliation, fear, and the pain of losing her only loved one so she chose to escape. Lulu was on the ground crying, trembling in fear. Once again she witnessed death before her very eyes. Liu Gan searched through Zhang Yu's clothes, but he didn't find anything. The five scumbags probably searched her thoroughly before him. This is all my fault. She is dead because of me. Lulu started crying even louder. This isn't your fault. Pan Hua got on the ground beside Lulu trying his best to comfort her. The source of this content is in 0 v Elbin. Net what happened this morning? Liu Gan walked over to question Lulu. At the break of dawn, Lulu forming words. While hiccuping as she sobbed, if I woke you guys up earlier, maybe you could have saved her and her boyfriend. It was because I was too gutless and useless. Lulu finally showing her deepest regret on making a poor decision. Liu Gan didn't say anything. He turned and walked out of the hardware store. He gathered all the supplies and put them together before stuffing them in his backpack because of the scumbags. He now had a few extra backpacks. Boss, what do we do now? Pan Hua asked. About the, the corpses on the floor, right now there is no us. We will go our separate ways. You and Lulu are on your own, Liu Gan stated coldly. Don't be like that. It is me who misunderstood you. Pan Hua got on his knees to beg Liu Gan. Everything that occurred this morning is due to the cruelty of the trembling world. The moment Liu Gan leaves with him and Lulu's ability, they will be doomed. They won't be able to face off any enemies that were stronger than them. It is not that. I won't help you too, but mainly because your personalities aren't suitable for this game. Resisting it will only bring more misery. Why not think of a way to escape? Maybe you can leave the game early, Liu Gan replied to Pan Hua. At this moment, a ah, zombie that seemed to have smelt the fresh corpses in front of the hardware shop wandered from afar and finally turned a corner to see Liu Gan and Pan Hua together. It got really excited and let loose a howl that sounded like a hungry animal. Pan Hua got scared and took a few steps back. Liu Gan just stood still. Only until the zombie moved very close to him did he drop his backpack and retreat rapidly, raising only one hand. He twisted his body in one fluid motion while chopping off the zombie's head from the neck. The zombie's head flew up high in the sky as the headless body took a few more steps before falling forward in front of Pan Hua, boss. I know we are a burden to you and I don't have any rights to request anything from you. I only ask that you bring us away from this area. Then afterwards, I won't bother you again. Pan Hua with a face of dread walking to Liu Gan. The day started getting bright. The five scumbags' body reeked of fresh blood and this strong smell was sure. To attract more zombies, if Liu Gan left them there, they would surely get surrounded and die miserably. Not too far off from an alleyway transmitted a smothered sound. Much like a hand grenade explosion. Then you guys have to keep up, you can. Not at Japan was request. Now that people have died, we have to rush before more zombies gather. 
if we don't leave now, he won't wait for us. Pan Hor rushed into the hardware store to tell Lulu. Lulu's face was pale white, but still got up too. Follow Pan Hua out of the store. At this moment, Liu Gan was already outside killing another three zombies that closed in on their location as it got brighter. This place was obviously no longer safe. Pan Hua moved forward to help Liu Gan carry another backpack full of supplies. Proceeding to follow closely behind Liu Gan towards a nearby alley, Lulu tried her best to catch up to them. Liu Gan and the group didn't walk too far. Before they suddenly heard a noise coming from afar accompanied by the sound of messy footsteps and cries for help, Liu Gan signaled for Pan Hua and Lulu to keep silent with a hand gesture before quickly climbing up to the roof of a two-story building nearby. Upon reaching the top, he peered in the direction of the noise in the distance were three males drenched in blood screaming for help while running for their dear lives. Behind them were dozens of zombies that looked like a train chasing after them. Liu Gan bounced off the outer wall of the building. Twice Ed landed on the ground. He hurriedly pushed Pan Hua and Lulu into a dark alley and instructed them to hide themselves behind the rubbish bins and the junk that was piled in one corner. After they were hidden, Liu Gan climbed up the rooftop of the two-story building again and looked towards the zombie train while Liu Gan was trying to hide his presence on the rooftop. The three males leading the zombie train reached a street close to where they were. The speed of the three males who were sprinting were considered pretty fast. Therefore, the zombies were not able to catch up to them. The three males continued to shout and holler the whole way. Subsequently dashing past the hiding place of our concealed trio. Seal trio. The Trembling World. Chapter 38. Large camp round Liu Gan shook his head. Originally there were only a dozen zombies, but with their yelling and screaming at the top of their lungs, they were practically asking for the attention of all nearby. Zombies, with that many zombies following behind, what would screaming for help do, even if there was someone willing to help? They would not take this risk. The three escapees coincidentally found the hardware store that Liu Gan's group had used as a resting place previously. It was half open with the grated gate still up. Quickly, they tried to close the gate and shut the door. However, the dozen of zombies following close behind didn't give them a chance to escape. The moment right before the metal grated gate was all the way down. A few zombies dove in between the floor and the gate. As the gate was not able to close completely, it started to crawl through. A lot more zombies started to crowd in and soon the metal gate was forced to. Rolled up, followed which, three screams resounded from within the house. Even if this were a game, the difficulty was too high. If players came in here half-heartedly, they would not survive. Same could be said for inexperienced players who lacked survival skills as they would be faced with different variations of carnage. But either way, the ending would be the same, death. There were two stragglers from the zombie train that seemed to have smelt Pan Hoi and Lulu and was charging towards the location where they were hiding. After discovering them, the two zombies let out a shriek as they pounced forward. Pan Hoa was trembling and could only hold up the machete. Adopting a defensive stance while letting loose a bellow, the same kind of sound used to scare away wild dogs, except it was not effective against zombies. Without even the slightest hesitation, the two zombies just kept madly charging towards them. Liu Gen appeared from above and landed heavily onto one of the zombies, swiftly killing it. At the same time, he jumped and killed another zombie midair with the axe in hand. The zombies were definitely dead and Liu Gen landed perfectly. 20. Perfect landing 10 tenths run, Liu Gen ordered the two in a low voice. He walked in the same direction the three males had come from, since all the zombies in the area were attracted to them. That path should be the safest route, one road at a time. Because of those three males' contribution, there were only a few. Zombies encountered en route, Liu Gan gave his other backpack to Pan Hua, with one hand wielding machete, the other hand an axe. Every time he saw one, he would kill one. After slaughtering a dozen zombies, they arrived in front of an institution. 
The courtyard had signs of a recent battle. Liu Gan signaled them to stay. As he proceeded alone ahead, the institution door had a sign that read Bureau of Industry and Commerce of Ninjing City. The institution's metal gate was distorted and on the floor, observing the pools of blood and messy footprints on the ground. This was probably where the dozens of zombies earlier came from, from the bloody mess. Liu Gan was able to notice a few particularly large footprints that were headed towards a different direction. This footstep reminded him of the plaza where he first killed the colossal zombie. The cross from the institution was a large building. The front of this building was an open space that, at this moment, had become a slaughter. Ground, dead bodies of zombies littered all over. One of the corpses was burnt black. There were a few zombies that were feasting on a body, greedily chomping on the organs and the meat. Needless to say, this must have been the campground where players and lucky survivors gathered. But at daybreak they were ambushed by a corpse tied and a colossal zombie. Although the institution door looked like a really sturdy iron door, the colossal zombie was able to easily strike it down with his humongous body, no matter the size or the defense of the gate. It was useless in the face of the colossal zombie. Those people had engaged in close combat with the corpse tide and colossal zombie. The difference in combat strength was too obvious. From the footprints, it was evident that only two groups of players were able to escape, one group being the three males that ran to direction of the hardware store and finally died there. The other group were chased by the colossal zombie and headed in a different direction. Nugan guessed that the other group was likely to have perished as well. Nugan looked at the corpses, bags, and boxes on the floor. After hesitating for a little while, he finally decided to enter the institution. Several zombies that were eating their fallen comrade lifted their heads and growled at Liu Gan before charging at him. The source of this content is in 0 v Elbin. Nat Liu Gan raised the sword and the axe in hands and charged forward. He was able to kill the zombies with ease. He eliminated the first two zombies, then kicked another two zombies that were behind him. Quickly, he impaled the head of one of the zombies standing. Pulling the axe from the head of the zombie, Liu Gan turned his back to end the other two zombies that he kicked earlier. After confirming that it was safe in the area, he started searching through backpacks and boxes. Pan Hui and Lulu carefully followed behind and after discovering that the institution was safe and started to help Liu Gan scavenge the bags of those who had died there. These three got their hands on bountiful loot. They were able to find a good amount of food and bottled water. There were a few canned goods and plastic packaged food. These were definitely the remains of the previous people who survived here. However, they were not able to consume the food. So the three had four huge backpacks and two full luggages. That they managed to cram everything into. Boss, should we eat here before? Leaving, Pan Hua suggested to Liu Gan since last night he had not eaten much. Now, his stomach was empty. This time we were able to scavenge a lot of food. But half of it were the type that was not meant to be stored for long. Looks like Liu Gan won't be as thoughtless as to waste perfectly good packaged food. No way. There is a colossal zombie nearby. It could wander back here. If we come across the colossal zombie, you two will definitely die. Liu Gan told Pan Hua. Liu Gan carried two backpacks and pulled a luggage retreating to the front of the institution door. Colossal zombie, Pan Hua said in a suspecting tone, while struggling to keep up with Liu Gan. You don't want to meet it, trust me. When my original group and I started, we were annihilated by it. I was only lucky to be able to escape, Liu Gan replied Pan Hua. That zombie must have been terrifying. After hearing from Liu Gan, Pan Hua now knew that the colossal zombie was too strong, and even Liu Gan, who was overwhelming the other zombies, was afraid of this colossal zombie. One can imagine how fearsome it truly was after leaving the front entrance of the institution. Liu Gan surveyed the fork road. He must choose one of the two paths to escape to. After choosing a path, they walked along a silent street that was a few tens of meters long, only to arrive at the gate of a residential district. The Trembling World, Chapter 39 
Outside of the window, this residential district had the words Lucky Garden District on the sign. This was a newly built district. And the interior designs of the buildings were very new. Only a portion of the houses had finished interiors, so a large portion of the houses were still empty. 20. Test Time Who remembers Lucky Garden District from Chapter 1? Feldy. I don't. Ha ha ha. Looking in from the outside of the gate, there weren't any zombies wandering. Around inside, there were only zombies on the ground from the looks of it. It seemed like all the zombies were dead, according to Liu Gan's analysis. This was possibly the first choice of the campground survivors since they had looted everything in. These buildings and killed the zombies inside. The inside appeared to be really peaceful. So Liu Gan considered leaving Pan Hua and Lulu behind in this district. He would leave all the food and drinks that he could not carry for them as a token of. His compassion, five days ago, in the vicinity of Lucky Garden District, torrential rain, booming thunders, and flashing lightning. A man wearing a suit was running in the rain without an umbrella. His home was in the Lucky Garden District that was only a stone's throw away. Half a year ago, after saving his salary from slogging his guts out for five years, he managed to purchase an estate in the Lucky Garden District. And renovation was completed a month ago. The man wearing a suit was called Li Zhuliang. He had a happy and blessed family which consisted of his pretty and gentle wife and his clever and obedient son. Today was the fourth birthday of his son, Dong Dong, therefore. Even though the rain was very heavy and the sky was constantly battered by the sounds of thunder, Li Zhuliang unhesitatingly braved the rain and ran in the direction of his house as the torrential rain splattered on the ground. The rainwater that was not able to drain off accumulated into big puddles on the streets. Normally, this was a very normal scenario. However, the water was red. As the rain accumulated on the streets, the red color of the water became more and more bright and glaring. The ground looked like it was filled with blood. At the same time, a weird bloody smell started to emerge out from the streets overflowing with the red-colored rainwater. Li Zhuliang stood in a courtyard which had a sign hanging above his head with the words Bureau of Industry and Commerce of Ninjing City. Li Zhuliang subconsciously touched his face and looked at his hand, which gave him a shock. When he saw that his hand was drenched in a blood-like liquid, he couldn't help but give a scream. His face lost all color and was very pale. At the same time, there were other pedestrians who were running in the rain and also found out that they were drenched in a blood-like liquid. Their faces became as pale as Li Zhuliang's and they looked at their surroundings, crying in fear. They cowered on the Sidewalk, determined to avoid this torrential blood raid, Li Zhuliang hesitated for a moment but ultimately decided to continue running towards Lucky Garden District. After all, he was already drenched and it was only a few meters until he reached home. Whatever the situation, rushing home was his priority. Li Zhuliang, after running in the blood rain, rapidly found that he had started to feel very uncomfortable. The places where he had contact with the blood rain like his eyes, nose, ears, and mouth started to feel a burning pain, as though his body was getting corroded. The source of this content is an of L. Ben Net, several dozen meters away. In the Lucky Garden residential district, mummy, it is raining outside. The four-year, old Dong Dong, who was lying against the window, said as he stared outside, Dong Dong's home was situated on the third floor. The housing complex was situated to the right of the gate after entering the district. So from there he was able to see the entrance to the gate clearly. Every day at this time, his daddy, Li Zhuliang, would enter this gate after he got off from work. Hence, Dong Dong had the habit of lying beside the window and looking in the direction of the gate every day and don't. Open the window, do not let the rain water enter, Dong Dong's mother, a young and pretty lady, casually replied to Dong Dong as she busily set up the table with food and Dong Dong's birthday cake. Will daddy buy a spaceship for me, Dong Dong? Eagerly looked out of the window and asked his mummy, of course he will, he has already promised you that he will buy it for you. 
The young mother replied down down as she slowly and carefully inserted the candles into the cake, the young and. Pretty mother's name was Zhu King. Her husband, Li Zhu Liang, had a pretty decent salary. Therefore, after she gave birth to Dong Dong, Zhu King resigned from her job and became a housewife. Every day for the past few years, she would take care of Dong. Dong and prepare a warm and delicious meal while waiting for her husband to get off from work. Mummy, why is the rain red in color? Dong Dong curiously asked his mummy as he looked at the reddish layer of water on the other side of the window. The rain is red because the light emitted from the street lamps are red, my dear boy. Zhu King replied to Dong Dong casually as she inserted the second candle into the cake. A four-year-old kid, with their curiosity at its peak, would have millions of questions they would ask. It is raining so heavily, will Daddy be able to come home? Dong Dong stretched out his tiny little hand and rubbed the window pane. He wanted to have a clearer look at the situation outside to confirm whether his daddy was going to reach home at this time like any other day. However, due to the torrential rain outside, it was a futile effort. The rain will definitely subside. Wait till the rain is lighter. And daddy will definitely reach home. Du King inserted the third candle and was preparing to insert the last candle. At this moment, there was a flurry of footsteps outside the door, after which there was the sound of jingling keys and the clicking of the door being unlocked. Du King put down the last candle and looked towards the door. The four-year-old Dong Dong, however, had already rushed over to the side of the door as the door opened. The mother and son pair looked at the daddy that was walking in and uncontrollably gave out a scream. His whole body was drenched in blood as if he was a bloody person. Don't worry, I'm not covered in blood. It's all the red-colored raid. Li Julian put down the box that contained the toy, quickly removed his shirt and pants, and threw them out of the house. After which he closed the door and proceeded to the bathroom for a warm shower. Zhu King walked towards the window and saw that the glass had been coated with the reddish water. With eyes widening, she couldn't even see through it. After a few minutes, Li Julian came out of the bathroom. The blood rain had already been washed off cleanly from his body. He changed into a clean set of clothes and walked towards the living room. What happened? Why is the rain outside red in color? Zhu King rushed into Li Julian's embrace and asked him with a trace of shock in her tone, "I am not sure." Turn on the TV. There should definitely be news regarding the red-colored rain. Li Zhuliang and his wife moved over to the sofa and turned on the TV. Dear citizens, please do not panic. The relevant departments have already started investigating this phenomena of red-colored rain, and the results will be released shortly. According to my preliminary inference, this should be caused by. The excessive red algae that had been aggressively breeding in the ocean and would have been carried up as the seawater evaporated to form rain clouds, creating this blood-colored rain phenomenon. Said from an expert on TV as he chatted with the TV host, "I said there shouldn't be anything wrong, so let's not delay Dong Dong's birthday celebration any more." Li Juliang patted his wife's Yu King's shoulder and moved towards the dinner table. Her table. The trembling world. Chapter Forty. Ramen. It's the brave model. It can transform in helium suspension mode. Dong Dong yelled as he excitedly opened his toy. He took the toy airplane out of the box, while imitating an actor's lines from the TV series playing on the screen in self amusement. Dong Dong. Oh, why did you open your gift? Opening the birthday present is supposed to wait until after eating the cake. Li Zhuliang went over to Dong Dong and confiscated it. Eat the cake, Dong Dong. Threw himself at his father Li Zhuliang and got carried off the ground before being lowered onto the seat next to him. Li Zhuliang placed the airship on the table by the window and proceeded back to the dinner table. Happy birthday! As the birthday song started, the family atmosphere suddenly changed to a soft and heartwarming one. Outside the tightly closed windows, the sky had already darkened. It was so dark that one's hand couldn't be seen, even if it was placed right in front of oneself. The torrential downpour outside added to the nightmarish setting of the world. 
The puddles on the ground grew steadily darker and darker and more and more crimson. After the first night passed and by the next morning, the torrential rain had stopped. The sky had already brightened up. Dong Dong woke up extra early. After waking up, he first spotted the airplane right by his bedside, uncontrollably. He revealed a big smile as he quickly got out of bed and ran around his room with the airplane for his own amusement. After running a while, Dong Dong felt hungry. Pushing open his door, he walked out to the living room. His parents had yet to get out of bed, however. Dong Dong heard some strange noise coming from their room. It sounded like someone eating something, TN. Perhaps it's nuts and the crack crack noise it makes what are they eating? It must taste good. Dong Dong started salivating he couldn't guess what it was. So he walked over silently, leaving his toy. Plain on the floor, he quietly pushed open his parents' door. After pushing open the door, Dong Dong witnessed a scene that left him dumbfounded. His dad Lei Julian was on top of his mom Zhu King, his teeth gnawing at her face, half her face. Remained intact while only the bones were left on the other half. Their bed at the far end of the room was full of blood. The source of this content is an OV L bin net. Dong Dong shrieked. With his face pale white from fright, it was clear that Du. To his young age, he wasn't able to comprehend what was happening. After hearing Dong Dong's sharp scream, Li Zhuliang lifted his head, and his crimson eyes landed on Dong Dong by the door. He released a monstrous roar before charging towards Dong. Dong with his blood-filled mouth wide open, seeing the pale face and crimson eyes, Dong Dong clearly didn't believe that this man was his father. Releasing a loud scream, he turned on his heels grabbed his toy off the floor, and ran back to his room. To hide, he immediately dove under the bed and watched the door from underneath. With a jarring boom, Li Zhuliang ran into the door, and it swung wide open, rebounding off the wall. Following Dong Dong's path into the room, he hadn't discovered. Dong Dong hiding underneath the bed, adopting a weird posture, he walked aimlessly around the room and would periodically release a terrible cry. At this time, a sharp screech from within the Lucky Garden District reverberated through the house, followed by the loud siren of a police car. The Lucky Garden District had a relatively low population rate, right when the police car that was right below the building started the siren. Li Zhuliang ran out and jumped through the window. Daddy, Mommy, Dong Dong whispered as he clenched his airplane closely with tears flowing from his eyes. Four days later, within the Lucky Garden District, Liu Gen spent some time to clear all the zombies that were roaming around, and he randomly chose an apartment with a wide field of vision. After scouting the inside of the apartment for zombies, only when it was safe did Pan Hua and Lulu decide to enter the apartment to rest. The floor of one of the rooms had blood, as well as meat and limbs, from God knows who. By now, Pan Hua and Lulu had been used to this type of setting and was able to resist vomiting. The fridge, kitchen, and cabinets seemed to have been scavenged through without any trace of food remaining. Han Hua got quite lucky inside the storage room. He had found a cardboard box containing a barbecue rack and a bag of charcoal. Looks like the family who lived here previously knew how to barbecue. Pan Hua placed some charcoal underneath the barbecue rack and he Found a small pot from the kitchen. Pan Hua ignited the charcoal and poured the bottled mineral water into the pot before placing ramen inside. The faucet didn't have any running water. It had been long since dry. Lulu found a relatively clean bowl and three pairs of chopsticks that she had wiped with a napkin. She placed the cooked ramen into the bowl and walked over with the food to Liu Gen, who was sitting at the kitchen table. Thank you. Thank you for saving us more than once. It was all my fault. I was too stupid and cowardly, and I was weighing us down. Lulu apologized as she placed the bowl of food in front of Liu Gan this morning. She had thought that Liu Gan was going to give her to the scumbags, but no one expected that she was actually used as bait so that he could kill the bad guys. If it weren't for him, she would have been defiled by those scum. No need to thank me. I was annoyed with those scumbags, too. They threatened my life. 
so I had to kill them, Liu Gan picked up the chopsticks and started eating the ramen, expressionlessly replying to Lulu, Boss, I mistook you. I, too, thought that you were going to give Lulu to them. You should have told us what you were planning so we could cooperate with you, Pan Hua said as he walked over with his bowl in hand and sat at the kitchen table near Liu Gan. Earlier that morning, Pan Hua had really been planning on blocking Liu Gan. But he was knocked back by Liu Gan instead. Pan Hua held a knife in his hand as he chased down the stairs after Liu Gan. He had lost all hope, but everything that happened afterwards was beyond his expectations. If I could defeat them, I would fight, but if I couldn't, I would have definitely given her to them to guarantee my safety. Liu Gan drank the soup as he replied to Pan Hui, eating this hot and steamy ramen was definitely tastier and more satisfying than crackers. After drinking the soup, his heart and body seemed to warm up. You wouldn't, you aren't that type of cold-hearted person, Lula said to Liu Gan. She refused to believe that, you are wrong. You wouldn't understand what I've been through, but that isn't important. Liu Gan indifferently replied to Lulu. The trembling world had changed his life. He didn't care about the kind of person he became because of one important point. After he had regained the use of his limbs, he wouldn't allow himself to be injured again. Alloy limbs. A punch that can break apart a tree, and a kick that could knock down a wall. Starting with such a huge advantage, Liu Gan would definitely continue playing and aim to be the most powerful existence. Existence.